Perfect with no flaws at all Are the laws of a love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life Islam is a way of life الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى أزواجه وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We praise Allah تبارك وتعالى and we ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Brothers and sisters in Islam welcome to our episode on marriage and uh, the situation and the conversation and the discussion is really heated and it deserves this kind of heat and therefore, since uh, in some countries it may be cold, so let us increase the heat and continue the discussion on some of the issues we dealt with. Uh, particularly when we got into the issue of women and looking for the right wife. What do we look for and uh, how do we identify religious uh, commitment and things of the sort. And uh, perhaps you would like to comment on the last comment that was made before. I'd like to pick up on the last issue we're talking about of obedience. I think a very important point to make is the wife's obedience to the husband should be according to her ability. Um, and I just sort of, I think it's nice to, or useful to relate something from an experience I was connected with, where a, there was a divorce situation that had taken place, and uh, the husband wanted his wife to look after the children of the former marriage. And this wife had had a series of children, one after the other. She was physically quite weak, and she was very afraid that she would not be able to look after these kids. But the husband was insisting, no, you can do it. You must obey me. I am the husband. I'm giving you, you know, this is what I'm telling you. You must do it. Yeah. So, mashallah, this uh, lady contacted of the shaykh to get advice. So the shaykh said to her, can you do it? Really? She said, no, I, I cannot do this. He said, if you can't do it, your husband cannot force you. It's not his right to order you to do this if it's not inside your capability. And he can only order you to do something that you are physically and mentally capable of. So he can't order you to harm yourself. MashaAllah, because this was a family where they had the book and the sunnah and they always agreed so alhamdulillah this was the the end actually it happened that subhanallah very soon after this a sister got flu and subhanallah she was very close to dying because of she was so weak mashallah the husband saw you know with his own eyes the reality of the situation so i think the point is here is that uh, a lot of brothers they read this hadith as the, such as the one i was quoting the point of ma mentioning it is Maybe we think we shouldn't tell people they are there. They can read them in any book or internet search, they can see it. But the wife should obey the husband. But they need to understand these hadith properly. They need to understand what does it mean for the wife to obey the husband. And as I'm sure we will elaborate, it is never an excuse for the husband to make dhulam and to make oppression. And he's not a tyrant. He's not, you're not supposed to be, here's my excuse to be Saddam or Hitler or something. No. You're supposed to care for and nurture your family. So I think that's an important point I yes. wanted to clarify Allah, about yeah. obedience to I mean, them. Brothers and sisters, please, when we are quoting the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we should understand them in the right context. And the best one to understand and to teach us the, the meaning of this hadith is the Prophet ﷺ himself. How did he lead his life? How was he treating his wife? He's the best husband. He's the best husband helping the, his wives in their daily chores. Many of us, they don't do that. They sit crossing their legs and shouting, do this, do that. The Prophet Sallallahu is in the kitchen, helping his wife, mending his shoes, touching his clothes. SubhanAllah, and he was so considerate. Many of us are not considerate. This is the reality. The Prophet Sallallahu he knows the mentality, he knows the, the mindset of his wives. He studies his wife, what they call it psychoanalysis. He knows them. And even he made it clear when he said, Oh Aisha, by Allah, I know you when you are happy and when you are upset. He said, How? 
stupid. When you are happy, when you want to emphasize on something, huh, you say by the Lord of Muhammad. So you swear by the Lord of Muhammad. And when you are angry, you say by the Lord of Ibrahim. See how observant the Prophet was. So this is the example. Brothers, if you want, mashallah, your wife to be like Sahabiyah, you should also follow the footsteps of your beloved Prophet Muhammad, who is the example, who is the best, who is the best for his wife. He is the one when he was asked, whom do you love most from among your wife? This was not a secret. He said, Aisha. In fact, this is in the hadith, the, uh, the brother was trying to, he thought it was him. He said, who do you love the most without mentioning the, the wives? Um, Abu Musa. Yes. Abu 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 so he said, Aisha. And they said, from among the men, he said, Abu Bakr. Not only this, my dear brothers and sisters, and I recommend a beautiful book by Imam Nisa'i. And if it is not translated into English, needs to be translated. Ishrat al Nisa by Imam Nasai. This is what this is the role model, the Prophet, how he was treating his wife. The whole book by Imam Nasai. Subhanallah. Ishrat al Nisa. Beautiful book. So the Prophet, he is the example how he was treating his wife. He is the best. Even the people. The Sahaba, they felt this was not a secret. His love for his wife is known. His love for Aisha in particular is known. That even on the day of Aisha, that's the day of gifts. If a Sahabi wants to give a gift to the Prophet ﷺ, he would wait and come on the day of Aisha. Hidna Umar anhu, when the rumor went on that the Prophet ﷺ divorced his wife, Okay? He came and he found his daughter Hafsa crying. He hit her. And he said, didn't ever I warned you? I have warned you many times not to listen to Aisha. Not to follow Aisha. You are not like Aisha. Neither you nor your father. So this, is, this shows what? Shows that the Prophet ﷺ, he loves his wife. That love is felt and known to everyone. So, so the, so the uh, to end the hadith and putting them in the right proper context is to see the interpretation and how they were interpreted in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. So he exemplified them in his behavior. Uh, what other qualities should one look for? Well, there is a hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah ibn Haram, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, when the Prophet ﷺ checked on to him and said, have you married? And Jabir said, yes. And the Prophet ﷺ asked him, was she a virgin or someone who was married before? And he said she was someone who was married before. And the Prophet suggested, why not a virgin so that you both can play with each other? You know, when a virgin marries a virgin, it's a beautiful life. So Jabir explained that. And he said, may Allah be pleased with him, O Prophet of Allah, my father was martyred with you. And he left a number of girls, sisters, my sisters. So I didn't want to bring another girl to them and they will be lost in chaos. I needed someone who was mature enough, adult enough to take care of them. And the Prophet approved of that Salaam. So one of the qualities that a brother should look for is that he should marry someone who was not married before. And that is defined as a virgin, but not as people think of a virgin as a virgin. So this is a quality that is... I didn't understand that, Sheikh. You should marry a virgin, I but what is a virgin? I hope you would not ask. I sincerely hope that you would not ask. See, I'm just... I'm but just, you know this yeah. beautiful hadith, the scholars, they gave explanation. Why you marry a girl who's a virgin, who's not married before? Because you will be the first man in her life. Okay? You are everything, you are going to be everything for her. She hasn't experienced the uh, worldly life. Maybe the, the ex-husband was rich and she is used to specific standard of living and these things. So when you marry this girl, he's not used to these things. So she will be content, okay? He'll have this contentment with her and the rida with her. And then he didn't say, when the same hadith, he approved of 
And I think that's the yeah. shepherd. And he, the Prophet Sallallahu he married. The only virgin was his Aisha. But I think also what's interesting from the hadith is that this Sahaba had clearly, you know, he had reasons for marrying someone who is not a virgin. And I think that's just an interesting to think about as well is that it just shows that you need to take your circumstance into consideration. I have met brothers, you know, who have the same thing. I don't want to marry a young girl. I need uh, a woman in my life who understands me and I can understand her and we can have... Uh, you know, he tried that and he found that for reasons it didn't work. And the same thing, he had children. So I think everyone, this is the thing, you have to look at your circumstances as well. That's, the, that kind of goes back to what I was saying about the context. Yes. Because sometimes you just take something out of context and then a woman says, well, I was married before what? I can't get married or Islam says I can't get married. It's like, and, and you see as well in the hadith that the Sahabi was very intelligent in, in how he was choosing his wife. And that's even something I would wish for the brothers. They're looking at a big picture. It's not just focused on just this one woman, but he's looking at his surroundings. He's looking at the future. He's looking at his children. He's looking at his akhirah. And he's putting the whole picture together when he goes to choose the wife to get married. And, and also, uh, one point if I may, that... The Prophet himself والسلام, married only one virgin. Yes. So no one would come and say, oh, this means that I have to marry a virgin. The Prophet's wives were all either widowed, divorced, or not married before. So this is an indication that this is permissible completely in Islam. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back, inshallah. A way of life, a way of life. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. So we learned from what was said before the break that it is a preference generally and in particular cases for particular individuals it may be highly recommended while in other cases not necessarily. So there must be some evaluation to one's circumstances and then one sees whether in his case a, a virgin would be better than married woman, a previously married woman or not. So it's not like a, a black and white. There's some gray in this regard. What other qualities should a man uh, look for in his potential spouse. I believe that, and I don't know if you guys differ with me as usual or agree. <laughs> I believe that. Why a is man, it that people differ with you? All? I, they hate me. I don't know why. <laughs> Anyhow, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Difference in opinion ignites and enriches sure. the discussion, inshallah, and, and we all agree on the principle. I believe that when looking for qualities in a woman, she has to be feminine and a pleasant sight to see. Why do I say this? Because I get a lot of marriage counseling and I get a lot of complaints. And a lot of these cases, we find that the woman is a woman by gender, yes. but not by character, unfortunately. And so many times the brothers complain, Akhi, my, my wife beats me. It happened. My wife beats me. And when I look into it, the, the sister has a, a black belt in a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So she gives him a, a choke lock or, you know, what is this? What kind of a marriage is this? Akhi, when you want to marry a woman, you want to marry someone who acknowledge her weakness, her vulnerability. She needs a man. It's not the other way around. So a man feels happy when a woman needs him and she makes him her shield, not the other way around. I remember one of the brothers, uh, and he's from the U.S., he was telling me that he had an American non-Muslim wife, and he was living in hell. He divorced her, and he married now, he's married now to three Asian women. And he is, mashallah, he has like a, a full army of children, and he's investing a lot of time in, in bringing them up Islamically, mashallah. And he says, I feel like a king. And I said, Akhi, subhanallah, we think of it the other way around. And he said, no, before I was married to a man because she is by gender a woman, but she always nags with me. She always thinks that we're equal in the sense that, no, you do the dishes, you do this, you do that. And these are not illogical requests, but they are not part of his responsibilities. So she kept on doing this to him when he married these Asian uh, Muslim ladies and, and sisters. They have a priority to please the husband not to make him work. And this, is, this happened with Khadija. May Allah be pleased with her. And we've mentioned this before, I believe. When Jibreel came to her, peace be upon him, uh, to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Khadija is going to come with food. So read her salam from Allah and tell her that Allah 
gives you the glad tiding of a tent or a house made of a pearl where there is no tired sum in it and no uh, loud noise. This is the environment she gave the Prophet So she has to be feminine. Is this a recommendation to marry Asian women? Or <laughs> what do we understand from... It's a cultural. Uh -huh. So it's not necessarily Asian, but it could be but one who woman has that... Have, any woman, any woman who could be from elsewhere, but has the qualities which may be found generally in Asian women, then that's something that you look for. True. And I think, yeah, but there is a, the fact remains there. There's one fact, Charla, just a few minutes. There's a fact which is, the real asset, oh my dear sister, your real asset is your femininity, being feminine. To be a successful wife. The moment you lose that, because this is what is happening, women, they become masculine. Women, the, even someone they talk, some in the way they walk, subhanAllah, like field marshal, you see? Bodybuilders. Really? What happened? Where is that rashaka? Where is that grace? Where is that? Gracefulness. This is, this is a reality we have to address. Yeah, that you are a feminine. This is husnat taba'al. You are a real woman. If, if I may. No, no, let I, me finish, please. Let me finish. <laughs> so, so here, this is very important. This is the real asset that you should have. You should not lose it. So your husband is longing for this. When he comes home, he feels this comfort. He feels this cheerful face. He feels these laughing expressions and saying, Yes, Habibi, yes, darling, yes, I miss you. This is what he uh, is longing for. Okay? This tender body, not one, mashallah, full of muscles. No husband wants that. Well, some do. Huh? This is it's abnormal. Quite strange. You'd be surprised. Yes, All right, so I think, you know, these series of uh, programs, we're talking from, from the male's perspective, you know, the qualities they're looking for in a wife. I find that a lot of men, they want these things as if, women are a menu and they get to just pick what they want and the man is very lazy you can also say that the man is not a man he's like oh she's a she's a man because there's no other man in the house so it's like you're not gonna get it from a sheikh telling the woman be feminine she's just gonna become feminine she's in a position where this guy keeps backing down and then she has to stand up for herself. That is a quality she should look for. Yeah, okay. and when she gets, and we're yeah, going to talk about exactly, this. Yeah. And I'll also remind us, that, remind everybody that Aisha radiallahu anha, you have to be careful when we're talking about, uh, you know, what is feminine. Aisha's one of the strongest people you see. She's going out to battle, she's, she's giving speeches, and, and the men are listening, and they're being encouraged, they're going out for war and stuff like that. But she was, had was those... she behaving like that at home? No, I'm I saying that, this is what and, I'm... and you might, f I'm saying that Whoa. there are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she has those, mm. a woman can have the qualities, we're not saying that she's always but, feminine. I mean, Sheikh, you asked, was she no. behaving like that at home? But I, I remember one, I, it's one of my favorite uh, stories about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home, and how he's arguing so ferociously uh, with him and Aisha having a big argument, they have to bring Abu Bakr to come and arbitrate and he comes and he slaps Slap. Aisha, yeah, you know this one and subhanAllah and the Prophet says Abu Bakr we didn't bring you here for this, you know and then when Abu Bakr leaves he says to Aisha, see I protected you from him, you know so they did used to have these, you know, that, this is strong spicy. discussion this is for the medical life yeah. let's, let's, let's yeah. be realistic, does that negate uh, the lady being feminine? No, no I, think, I think the beautiful thing is the Prophet says, you see how I protected you from him? And this is the, the man and the woman. You see, the man is the protector, he is the maintainer. And this is how Allah SWT defined him in the Quran. The point that I mentioned about a woman being feminine has two sides to it. Nowadays, the majority of women who are not abiding by the Quran and Sunnah what they do is, they're feminine when they're outside the house where they're denied from being so. Allah tells them, do not soften your voices. So when they are outside the house, when they talk to strange men, when they come to the sheikh, sheikh, can you please answer this? What are you doing? You're melting. Hold, get hold of yourself. You're not supposed to talk like this to a stranger, to an mahram. You should be any you know, straightforward, not soften your voice. Professional, maybe. Yeah, but in the house, when she speaks to her husband, why didn't you get this, uh, the groceries? Why do you always come late? Why don't you take us out? I'm jumping just by every time you say that. I'm going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what happens. Allah no, Allah it Allah should Allah. be the other way around. By selecting a wife who's feminine, who knows how to treat her husband, 
Yeah. But outside, she's serious because she knows that this is a sin. But we, but we might be giving the wrong message thinking that a man, that the woman is either feminine or she's not, and the man just picks the one. That a lot of her femininity is going to come from the man's um, encouragement. If she dresses nicely, most men would never say anything. She puts nice makeup on, he doesn't care, where's my food? And then so if she doesn't get any signs from the man, she doesn't get any encouragement, or, and I'll tell you the best one, when the man threatens the marriage. When he says, oh, if you don't act like this, I'm going to divorce you. How can she be feminine and open up and be vulnerable? When he's threatening her. She has to close down. When the man said, oh, the men always do this joke, I'm going to marry a second wife. Ha, ha, ha. Close down. He's making her masculine and he said, I want to marry. And if he goes to another woman, he's going to do the same thing again. So he's going to keep marrying them. I want to add to the Sheikh, it's a very profound point. And I, I have some experience of sisters complaining of exactly what the Sheikh is. Uh, sister saying, he made me a man. He made me have to behave in a masculine way. And for, very, for the very reasons that he didn't make my life secure, he's been away, he's been absent, he, I've been on the social security. You know, I've had to learn to live like him. I've had to pay the bills. I've had to go the shopping. I've had to do this and that. Yeah? This is even for some of the du'at. They're traveling and this and that, and the wife has to live the life on her own. She has to become... And then she says, and now you blame me when I'm behaving like a man. Now here's the thing. We're, we, I think we went a little far away from the thing. We're talking about what you're looking for in the future wife. Now we're dealing with domestic issues at home. What happens afterwards. And why the man doesn't do what is right. Therefore the woman doesn't do what is right. Therefore they have problems. But we're, this is later. We're dealing with now, you're going, you're fetching for a wife. You're studying what you're looking for, and you're trying to make the lady being feminine, her conduct, the way she uh, carries herself, is one of a woman. So that you, now of course, if you wind up going into the marriage and then you don't do your job and then she has to become a man, fine, then that would require its own discussion. But we don't also want the viewers to misunderstand that, okay, well, you know, we don't have to pay attention to this element because that's what you want to look for by default. Unless you said you know some men who like bodybuilders, uh, which remains to be a little strange. But otherwise, look for the woman that is feminine, and afterwards be a man. Be a man so that she can remain a woman. But uh, you look for feminism, otherwise uh, it's like your buddy at home. Two wrongs do not make a right. What you've said is exactly correct. But when we come to counseling, we don't, when a woman complains to me, I don't say, oh... That man needs to be hung. What an evil person he is. No, of course. You and when he comes and complains to me, I wouldn't say, yeah, you should divorce your wife. I tell each one his responsibilities, not his rights, because I'm reconciling. So what we're talking about is the qualities needed, the responsibilities of a wife. When we come to the responsibilities of uh, the brother, the qualities, we'll lash them, then we will give them hell, inshallah. Not any, literally, huh? It's not in my We'll, we'll lash them. Okay. Okay, well, uh, with that said, we will have to conclude this particular episode. Yet, inshallah, we promise you, bi-idhnillah, to carry on with this discussion in the very next episode. Zakumullah khairan for uh, being attentive. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.